Hi, I'm Eddie Hazard. And I'm Connie Jo Seacrest. And today we're going to beam over to the 2014 Star Trek convention in Burlingame, California at the lovely Hyatt Hotel. Mm -hmm. Connie, are you ready? I am ready. Are you? No, I don't like beaming. You don't like beaming? Why? I hate it. I, t I just don't like beaming. Every single time I get beamed somewhere, my feet turn backwards. Yeah, I don't think Scotty likes you very much. Well, I'll be talking to Scotty after the show. Okay. Without any scotch. <laughs> so you ready? I am ready. Are you? Uh, I'm ready as I'm going to be. Okay, let's hope for the best. Well, let's go. Scotty, beam us in. Hi, I'm Eddie Hazard. And I'm Connie Jo Seacrest. And we're here at the Burlingame Hyatt Hotel here for the Star Trek convention. Connie, what do you think about all these lovely people here since we've been here? It came is down? awesome here. There's lots of art, there's lots of toys, pictures, celebrities. A lot of celebrities. There's actually some spaceships over there. As a matter of fact, Mr. Spock is over there yep. signing autographs and touching people on the shoulder. <laughs> if you're not here, you're missing out. This is Edward Hazard here at the Star Trek convention here at the Hyatt Burlingame, California, right outside of San Francisco. I'm here with the one and only Mr. Michael Doran. Sir, it's a pleasure meeting you. Thank you. And every year you're here, you're one of the nicest guys out here. And my question is, when you auditioned for this part, did you ever in your wildest dreams think this is what it would result in? Uh, no, I didn't. I mean, uh, none of us did. We were all... Just happy to be working, having a job, and um, thought we'd uh, work for a couple of years, make a little extra bucks, uh -huh. pay some bills, and that was it. What led you to the uh, interview here, you know, for the audition when you started off for Star Trek? What, what were you doing before that? Um, I had done quite a few things. I had done a couple of movies. Um, I'd done a couple of uh, sitcoms over, you know, that, that two years before. And... Um, I was doing Falcon Crest at the time when I got called down from uh, from San Francisco because we were filming here, and uh, it was just another audition. Uh -huh. it, I mean, I was a fan of the show, and I asked my agents to see if I can get an audition, but they couldn't do it. And uh, two weeks later, I get a call said, "Oh, they're gonna, they want to see you as this character," and I go, "Great!" And that, that's how it that's how it started. How, how many uh, callbacks did you have? I had three. <laughs> I had. Wait a minute. I went in there the first day. I had two. So after the uh, first or the second callback, did you go, I might have this? No. No, I, I, I don't look at it that way. I never, I, I go in, I do the best job, and I'm gone. Cool. You know, physically and mentally, I'm done with it, you know. And so uh, I went in, did a nice job, I thought. And then um, uh, about three weeks later, oh, no, I'm sorry, a week later, they call. And they said, oh, they want to see you. Uh, great. Right on. And then uh, it was down to the three of us. In fact, uh, I was just talking to Karen Parsons from uh, oh, wow. Fresh Prince. Yeah. James Avery and late I James, uh, were the last Avery. two wow. that were called in. He and I were going up for the part of Wharf. Tell me about uh, your flying now. Uh, I know that you're an avid flyer and you fly all over. What, what got you into flying? Were you flying before the show? or no, I, was actually, I was actually a, a big proponent of aviation for many many years really? loved when I was a kid my brother and I loved flying movies the John Wayne movies and and then as aviation progressed um, you know in terms of movie wise stuff like that I was a big fan of that but but I also was a big fan of aviation just outside of the movies I mean I I knew airplanes backwards and forwards uh, I owned 12 airplanes uh, through oh. my through my through my career Goodness. through my career buy and sell buy and sell buy and sell now the question is is there another movie coming up star trek movie uh -huh. next generation yes no and there's going to be another uh, star trek movie but not next generation well mr dorn it has been a pleasure Thank talking you to you my very pleasure. cordial like i said the line technicians spoke very highly of you at the airport and it's truly a pleasure interviewing you This is Condi Joe Seekers with Chabot TV, Comcast 27. I am here at the Star Trek convention in Burlingame, California. And here with me, I have Chase Masterson, who played Lita in Star Trek's Deep Space Nine. Hi. How are you doing today? Very well, thank you. How are you? Great. Good. And um, where did you originally come from? Like, I grew up in Texas. Um, okay. My dad was in the Army, and we moved around all over, but I basically uh, lived there. And okay. um, yeah, yeah, it's nice to be here in Burlingame. Great. And what got you into acting? What inspired you in order to, to get into it? My mom was a theater director, and I grew up doing uh, 
musicals mostly. I did my first professional show at 18. Um, I played Helena in A Midsummer Night's Dream, so I started classical theater uh, professionally very early. Wonderful. And how was it playing one of the most sexiest um, women in, in sci-fi? Thank you for asking. It's been a wonderful run. Um, I'm, I'm really happy for all the things that Star Trek is continuing to bring. Um, the show has really transcendent values and messages, and that's the most important thing. The sexy character is just something that's external, but the, the messages of Star Trek are really what's important, and it's a really great thing to be a part of that. And are you enjoying yourself at the convention today? Yeah, yeah it's always good to see old friends, uh, members of the cast, and it's always nice to be here. We're doing some great fundraising for uh, an organization that I founded called the, called the Pop Culture Anti-Bullying Coalition. So that's what I'm here for this weekend. 100% of the proceeds for all autographs and everything is going to that, and we are the first uh, organization to bring the, uh, uh, sorry, um, to stand, make a stand against bullying at pop culture conventions. So if you'd like to know anything more about that, uh, the address is antibullyingcoalition.com or at antibullyingco on Twitter. And um, I'm really proud of the work we're doing. That is wonderful. That's a great charity. Thank you. And uh, do you have anything coming up, you know, in the in the future for film or television? I, thank you so much. I do. I just shot an episode of a really cool show last week. I'm not allowed to talk about it yet, but check out my website for updates, chasemasterson.com. Okay. Thank, thank you. you so much, Chase. Thank you so much. Thank yeah. you. Hi, this is Connie Joe Seekers for Tabo TV, Comcast 27. I am here at the Star Trek convention in Burlingame, California, and here with me I have Garrett Wong, who played Henson Harry Kim in Star Trek Voyager. How are you doing today, Garrett? I'm doing well, thank you. Wonderful. And what got you into acting? What inspired you? Um, well, I mean, I've always been, uh, I've, I've always entertained my, my parents and my parents' friends with my different accents and impersonations, and so I've always been an entertainer my whole life, but um, I guess being in L.A. was probably easier for me to start trying to act in LA as opposed to if I was living in the Midwest or something. So I was at college at UCLA, so it was sort of a natural progression for me to just try to hit the Hollywood scene and see what happens. And how was it when you finally landed the role on Star Trek? That's wonderful. I mean, it was just dream come true. I had to pinch myself every day. It's sort of like, oh my God. Because if you think about it, it's um, getting on a TV show as a series regular is, is probably harder than getting on an NBA team or a, or a Major League Baseball team, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's just, it's just, so many people trying to do that. So few spaces allowed. You know, people are going to, to be on a show. It's just not. They don't hand that out like candy. You know, when you show up in LA, it's tough to to do that. So, um, a lot of pinching myself. Yeah. Wonderful. And do you have anything um, coming up in the future, television, acting-wise, anything like that? Um, yeah, I've kind of taken a bit of a break from Hollywood. Um, so the stuff that I've done has been kind of through word of mouth for friends, a few voiceovers. I worked on Star Trek Online, um, which was a lot of fun. So it's all it's all uh, just here and there. I, I haven't made the move back to Hollywood again. I've been a bit lazy. I've been traveling so much the last nine years that uh, um, that's been my life pretty much. But I do see myself returning at some point to, to uh, satisfy my creative urges <laughs> yet again. Yeah. Great. And are you enjoying the convention so far today? Ready? Oh, I love it. It's great. I love going to conventions. It's one chance I get to show everybody how I how I am in real life, you know, because everyone watches the show and they think, okay, that's exactly how that, that person is. Mm -hmm. how, whatever character he plays, that must be how he is in real life. And that's very untrue. So um, I tend to find myself a, uh, a more fun-loving uh, jokester, you know, than Ensign Kim is on the show. So Great. Well, thank you, Garrett. Thank you very much. Thank you. Edward Hazard here again at the Berlin Game Hyatt here in San Francisco, California, here at the Star Trek convention. We're here with Thrax and Alexandra. Alexandra, how long have you been coming to the conventions? This is my first convention, actually. Four years. Oh, four years? Four yes. years. 1995 was my first convention. Holy moly. What city? San Francisco. Oh, Cal Palace. Oh. Cal Palace. Yes. Do you travel around over the convention and stuff? I have been to Los Angeles and to Las Vegas for conventions. Normally I go to uh, the Las Vegas one. This took me about 20 minutes to put on, but to make it took me weeks. Yeah. Uh, probably months. This is uh, all done uh, by uh, to measure, of course. Uh -huh. I'm six foot eight, so you have yes, to understand. <laughs> yeah, you are. Spot Vegas is a very tall man. 
this is actually not mine. This is a friend of mine who passed away. Oh, oh. Uh, her husband gave it to me. I see an autograph there. Yes, it is autographed by Robert O'Reilly, Marta, and Gowron, the two Klingons that were here today. Wow. Wow, I'm impressed. Yes. I would like to say what Vulcans always say, live long and prosper. And guess who I'm here with, ladies and gentlemen, the one, the only, Mr. Robert Picardo. How are you doing, sir? Very well indeed. Thank you and welcome to the Creation Entertainment San Francisco Star Trek Adventure. Do you have any new uh, films coming up? I'm in the new Coen Brothers movie called uh, Hail Caesar. Mm -hmm. It has big famous stars in it like uh, George Clooney, Scarlett Johansson, no. Josh Brolin. No. Um, that's Boy, exciting. Uh, many, wow. many stars. And then there's me. Wow. Yeah. When, when is it coming out? Uh, it doesn't come out until February of 2016. Because wow. it's shooting right now. I just worked on it. What, what, where's the location? Uh, it's being shot in California. In, uh, you know, it, it's set in the 1950s. Other than that, I'm not allowed to talk about because I signed a non-disclosure agreement. Now, I heard that you wrote two of the Star Trek episodes. Is that correct? Uh, it's or an exaggeration. Write. I am the first. I'm the first actor to ever get a writing credit on yes. any of the Star Trek wow. series. Yes. I, uh, I, I co-created one of the stories. Um, between, uh, it's called Lifeline, and it was between uh, my character and his programmer, Doc Zimmerman. So yes, I, my writing partner, John Bruno, and I, but I was the first Star Trek actor to get a writing credit. So that is true, or half true. Very cool, mm -hmm. very cool. And I heard you are one out of the three actors on Star Trek to wear all three colored uniforms, is that correct? That is true, you know all yeah. your trivia. Yeah. And <laughs> I'm also, uh, I am also, um, the only actor who has uh, had a re regular part on both of the major television uh, science fiction franchises in the States, Stargate and yes. Star Trek. Yes. If I'm in Star Wars, then I win uh, the trifecta. You know. Since your success with Star Trek, like, how did you take that as an actor? Like, Well, you know, I mean, I had been a successful actor. I'd been, I had played leads on Broadway. I had already mm -hmm. starred in a, in a popular television drama, China Beach and had been guest stars on many other television shows. But what Star Trek does for you is it makes you internationally known because it's shown in so many different countries. And even though not everyone is a Star Trek fan, there are enough of them all over the world that you become internationally recognized. And not only that, because Star Trek fans are so loyal, really the loyalist fans on the planet, they, they celebrate your work even long after the show is, is, uh, has completed its original run because it never quite goes away. So I think that's what Star Trek gives you. It gives you a, a uh, signature role for your career as an actor. Very true. And what was your um, best experience working on the Star on Trek Star series? Trek, other than staring at Jerry Ryan when she didn't notice <laughs> I was staring at her, I, I would say, um, I, I, you know, I, uh, the friendships, really. You have to, I, I have great, lasting friendships with I mean, really with all of the actors, but my closest friends on the show, Ethan Phillips, Kate Mulgrew, and uh, Robbie McNeil, and Garrett, more and more. Garrett and I are becoming closer and closer as he gets older and grows up. He was a boy when we started. So you know, the, the friendships that I've made with the actors are the, are the greatest legacy of doing the show. And, uh, and we had a lot of laughs together. We had a surprising amount of fun. Star Trek, when you watch it, to me, as much as I like it, doesn't look like the actors had as much fun making it as they really did. Yeah. I hope you had a lovely time here today at the Berlin Game Hilton here at the San Francisco airport. Interviewed a lot of beautiful people. Connie? Yes. Yes, it was great seeing the celebrities here, seeing all the Star Trekkies seeing people dressed up in costumes. As they say, cosplay, I, I've had a ball. Is there anything mm -hmm. else you want to say, Connie, before we go? No, I think I'm good. You well, good to go? I'm good to go. All right. Scotty, beam us up. You are watching Chabot Television, Channel 27. Chabot College. Just the greatest place on earth. You heard it. You heard it.